Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Morning Prayer from All Saints Carshalton. Uh, my name is Francesca Perlman. I'm an ordinand training at St Augustine's College, and I'm very fortunate to be able to spend a couple of months with you at All Saints. So today we'll be doing morning prayer from the contemporary version, which you can follow either on the app or in the Book of Common Worship, and I've given you all the details of the service uh, laid out for you. Um, today we commemorate uh, Hilary, Bishop of Poitiers, in fact it's a lesser festival. Um, Hilary grew up in a pagan family from high social standing, and he was very well educated. Um, Hilary of Poitiers later came to the Christian faith and became Bishop of Poitiers. During that time, he was very keen to defend the Christian beliefs. He defended Athanasius's belief that Jesus is really God. This means that when God came into our world and in the person of Jesus Christ, he remained fully God as well as fully human. And he very actively opposed a group called the Arians, and for his uh, for doing so, he was banished by the Emperor Constantine for three years to Phrygia. In Phrygia, he kept on making trouble, so he was in, eventually allowed to return home. And he continued to debate about his beliefs. So we commemorate him today. Uh, there are the two uh, lesser commemorations. Mungo, missionary bishop of Strathclyde in Cumbria, and George Fox, founder of the Society of Friends, otherwise known as the Quakers. So let's just quieten ourselves for a moment or two before we start morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory for ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. We now say the Jubilate, or Psalm 100. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we now come to our psalm for today, Psalm 20. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant you your heart's desire and fulfil all your mind. May we rejoice in your salvation and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord perform all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will save his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the mighty strength of his right hand. 
Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will call only on the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. O Lord, save the King and answer us when we call upon you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We come to our Old Testament reading now, from the book of Amos, chapter 3. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O people of Israel, against the whole family that I brought up out of the land of Egypt. You only have I known of all the families on the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Do two walk together unless they have made an appointment? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from its den if it has caught nothing? Does a bird fall into a snare on the earth when there is no trap for it? Does a snare spring up from the ground when it has taken nothing? Is a trumpet blown in a city, and the people are not afraid? Does disaster befall a city, unless the Lord has done it? Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? Proclaim to the strongholds in Ashdod, and to the strongholds in the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves on Mount Samaria, and see what great tumults are within it, and what oppressions are in its midst. They do not know how to do right, says the Lord, those who store up violence and robbery in their strongholds. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, an adversary shall surround the land and strip you of your defence, and your strongholds shall be plundered. Thus says the Lord, as the shepherd rescues from the mouth of the lion two legs, or a piece of an ear, so shall the people of Israel who live in Samaria be rescued, with the corner of a couch and part of a bed. Hear and testify against the house of Jacob, says the Lord God, the Lord God of hosts. On the day I punish Israel for its transgressions, I will punish the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. I will tear down the winter house as well as the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall come to an end, says the Lord. A Song of the New Jerusalem Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. <clears throat> the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. We now come to our New Testament reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2. St Paul writes, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified, and I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, 
but with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. <clears throat> Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them, because they are discerned spiritually. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of God so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. We now say our gospel canticle, the Benedictus, or the Song of Zechariah. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. We now come to a further time of prayer, which you can either follow through the link on the app or on page 379, but I will add some extra prayers too. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let us pray to the Lord. That the people of God in all the world may worship in spirit and in truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for all saints, 
and for other churches too, that we will reach out to our congregations, giving them a sense of community, whether they are near or far from our buildings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the church may discover again that unity which is the Father's will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the nations of the earth may seek after the ways that make for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. We think especially today of the United States of America. We pray for a smooth transition of power, for safety at the inauguration of the new president. We pray for wisdom for the new president, Joe Biden, and for reconciliation and forgiveness between those whose political views differ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the whole creation, groaning in travail, may be set free to enjoy the glorious liberty of the children of God. Let us pray to the Lord. We think of our world suffering in so many ways. Help us to be more responsible in our stewardship of creation. We think also of our societies suffering during this terrible pandemic from the illnesses and its consequences. Thank you for the hope of a vaccine and may it be distributed equitably and efficiently. Please strengthen and support all those who work in healthcare and frontline professions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death may rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we think especially of those who are mourning loved ones and who have died who have died during this pandemic. Please bring comfort and hope to them. Let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. Our collect for today. Everlasting God, whose servant Hilary steadfastly confessed your Son, Jesus Christ, to be both human and divine, grant us his gentle courtesy to bring to all the message of redemption in the incarnate Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing in the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may you have a blessed day wherever you are.